Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life. I will be covering duanum and basically small bowel and the colon. Okay, moving more distally, we have small bowel. The most proximal small bowel portion to the stomach is the duanum. This one does a very good job of telling us we are in the duanum. All right, let me rotate this so it is more easier to look at for everyone. So the small bowel is composed of a different type of epithelium. Instead of the very pink fulvular epithelium, we now have more purple, bluer, intestinal type epithelium. So instead of having the pink mucin, you now have these goblet cells. These produce mucus. And this is the type, this is more of a thicker mucus that you will find in the lower intestinal tract. So these are goblet cells. And when you have goblet cells, this indicates that you have intestinal type epithelium. So once again, we have small bowel with its villi, which are lined by intestinal type epithelium. Underneath it, you have this lamina propria. And in contrast to the stomach, the lamina propria of the small bowel is actually filled with inflammatory cells. And that's a normal finding within lamina propria of the small bowel. You have uh, plasma cells, which you see abundance of. You could have the sites here and there, and you could have some eosinophils every now and then. You should not have neutrophils within your epithelium because that is what we call active inflammation. And for example, we will call it active somethingitis. And since this is the duanum, it will be called active duanitis. If it was the colon, it would be called active colitis. Now, so since we do not have neutrophils, this is a completely normal small bowel biopsy where the nice long slender villi that helps you absorb nutrients. Um, another thing that is conceptually hard to think of is that you see these glands there but they're technically in continuation with the surface the stuff in the center of this lumen is the same stuff that's here and it's the same stuff that's here if, if this was in the body and these strips kind of dive deep down and make a loop and go back up and technically all of this is epithelium this is just epithelium that has delved down into the lamina propria. So I was saying that this is duodenum and I keep calling it duodenum and that reason is because you see these very different type of cleared cytoplasmic cells, these are called the Brunner glands. The Brunner glands are only found in the duodenum, not anywhere else in the small bowel. So whenever you see this, you know that you are in the duodenum. And this is actually a really good biopsy because you can see more layers. So for example, here you see the surface epithelium in continuation with your crypts. You have your lamina propria with the inflammatory cells. Here you see this thin layer of musculus mucosae. And then underneath the musculus mucosae, where most of your Brunner glands should be located, is the submucosa. And within the submucosa, you have these ganglion cells, and they're part of what helps you have parastalsis. Every now and then you can see the Brunner cells pushing through the muscular mucosae and into the lamina propria and that's completely okay within the duodenum. And this is not invasive cancer. If you know, if you are thinking, oh wow, look at this, this is invading into the lamina propria, then this must be cancer. No, this is Brunner glands and this is something that they can do. But most of the time they are located underneath this layer of muscular mucosae within the submucosa. So this is duodenum. Now, if we move to say this piece of tissue or this piece of tissue, let me orient it so you can see it straight on. You see that we have nice slender long villi covered by intestinal epithelium with the goblet cells. You have your lamina propria full of inflammatory cells and your crypts. This is actually better. You see how I was saying before, this surface epithelium is on continuity with the epithelium within these crypts. As you can see, look, this is a continuation, continuation. It goes around continuation, continuation. So the crypts dive down into lamina propria and it forms this. When it's cut on a tangential section where you cannot see this full diving down, then you'll see all of these little gland looking things, but they're also all in continuation with the surface. All right, so back to this specimen, we have our epithelium, we have our lamina propria, and now we have this thin muscular mucosae and we don't see any Brunner glands. And this is basically all we can say, this is, is small bowel mucosa. Most small bowel mucosa will look like this in the jejunum, in the ileum. The only exception is in the terminal ileum, you have larger aggregates of lymphoid cells and these lymphoid aggregates are called your Peyer's patches. And when you have these 
uh, abundant aggregate of lymphoid cells and your endoscopist says that this specimen is ileum, then you can say, yes, I see ileum. But if, for example, your endoscopist says that, oh, this is ileum, but you don't see those lymphoid aggregates, then you'll be like, well, all I see is small bowel mucosa. And since this is all normal, it will be small bowel mucosa with no significant abnormalities or small bowel mucosa without diagnostic abnormalities. Similarly, um, if you just have this piece here, uh, with the Brunner glands, then you'll be able to say duodenal mucosa with no significant abnormalities. Okay, so that is small bowel, all in all. Uh, another key finding with a small bowel is these very, very uh, granular eosinophilic cytoplasmic cells within the crypts of your small bowel, and these are called PANA cells. And they are commonly found throughout the small bowel, and you can still find them a little bit within the right colon, but they should go away as you go further down your GI tract um, from your transverse to your descending colon, they should not be there. Last thing I'm going to talk about is the colon. And in normal colon, you see similar findings uh, as the small bowel, except you don't have the villi. So the reason the small bowel has villi is because their small bowel functions mainly for absorption, whereas for colon, the main function is absorption, but as well as secreting mucin. That's why you can see, look, there's so much more goblet cells in the colon than in the small bowel. And all of these goblet cells secrete a lot of mucus. And that is what basically lubricates your colon so you can have nice, smooth bowel movements. And so similarly, we're going to talk about here is your surface epithelium. In the colon, you will also have these crypts. And you can see that surface epithelium dives down and comes back up, dives down, comes back up. So you can see it perfectly here. The surface epithelium dies down, come back up, and in between is your lamina propria. The other thing you can notice is that there's not as a dense of a population of inflammatory cells within the lamina propria of the colon. And now you can also see here is your thin layer of musculus mucosae, and here are some ganglion cells, you know, similar thing, help with paracelsis, help you have bowel movements. One common thing pathologists like to describe the colon is as racks of test tubes. So what they mean by that, normal colon has racks of test tubes, is like, for example, right here you see you have these nice crypts going straight down and they're parallel next to each other and it doesn't seem to like skip a beat this is your nice racks of uh, test tubes and this is the normal structure of a normal colon when these nice little test tubes get cut in the weird tangential sectioning then you'll have more of well i actually don't have it very well here then you'll have more of these circular things that looks like individual glands but that's not actually true these for example, this will connect up with this if you cut it some more. This is what I have was a random colon biopsy, whereas in the colon, okay, here's something cool. In the colon, you see this cell and you see, where else can I find one to show you here? Um, this cell and this cell, you're like, oh, Cindy, look, these are granular uh, eosinophilic cells. This must be PANA cells. These are actually... Um, endocrine cells within the colon and the difference you could tell is within the colon the endocrine cells are uh, more basally located where the nuclei is above it and the granules are is below it whereas in panna cells let's go back to our small bowel in panna cells you have your nucleus more basally located and your granular pink cytoplasm more uh, apically located. When I say apical, it means it's pointing towards the lumen. So this is the apical side, this is apical, and this is base. So panna cells, basally located nuclei, uh, apically located uh, granular cytoplasm, whereas in colon, your endocrine cells have more apical nuclei and basally uh, granular cytoplasm. And the, uh, you also tell like the cytoplasm of these endocrine cells are much deeper magenta, whereas these are slightly light, more pink. Okay, so this is a uh, normal looking colon. Uh, as I've mentioned in the duodenum and small bowel, the lamina propria can be filled with inflammatory cells, but you should really only see plasma cells, plasma cells, all these plasma cells. You can see the occasional lymphocyte. Here are your lymphocytes. And um, you could have the occasional eosinophils like this one and this one and these, but you should not see any neutrophils. If you see any neutrophils within the epithelium, then you'll call that active colitis. All right, so that's really it 
for today. And please, 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 please comment down below if you found this helpful at all and you want me to keep making videos like this. And the next video that I would make would be the most common pathological diagnoses within the GI tract which I've shown you now the normal for. Please like and subscribe and also press that notification bell. And I will see everyone next time. Bye.